Hey everybody, good morning, welcome to Tat Talk once again. It's a new week, it's Monday, no idea what day it is, May the something, episode six of season two. This is going to be a good one, two people I've known for a long, or one I've long known for ages, and the other one not so long. But uh, welcome to the Linekers, this will be a blast. First of all, uh, the young man um, staying for the longest period of time with his mum and dad during quarantine. Welcome to the show, Harry Lineker. Hi mate. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good as we can be. Are you upstairs or downstairs here? What's I'm upstairs. I'm in my bedroom, the same place I've been for the past seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Never moves. <laughs> and the old man in the family, we have known Rob for years and years and years. Welcome, Rob Lineker. Hi, mate. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Are you upstairs too? or you know? I am. I'm in the office. All right, brilliant. Well, good having you. Where, where is home, by the way? Worksop, Nottinghamshire. All right, nobody over here in America knows there's a clue where it works. Robin Hood country, they're not Robin Hood country, that's where we are. Is, it, is it far from uh, Sherwood Forest? Yeah, it's uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Oh, is it really? They have a mm. sense of parks there, don't they? Yeah, yeah, that's in, in Sherwood Forest. Yeah, we went there uh, years ago. It was brilliant. I used to love uh, Centre Parks. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show. It's going to be a blast today. Lots of viewers uh, piping in and saying, uh, I'm trying to see who's, say, who's saying hi to you. Cindy Brock said, hi, Rob and Harry. Good to see your smiling faces. Hi, Cindy. Hey, yeah, Cindy's amazing. All right. We're going to start off, as we do always, with two, uh, two questions with a twist. Because father and son, and everybody knows I can relate to that relationship. So... <laughs> We have a question we ask some guests as, uh, what are your pet peeves? However, on today's show, I want to know what your pet peeves are about each other. So first of all, we're going to start with you, Harry. Do you have a pet peeve about your dad? I do. I have a pet peeve that he's careful, actually... Careful, <laughs> He's stolen it off of my granddad. It, it originated from my granddad. And... Um, this used to happen whenever we were around the dinner table. If my granddad wanted my attention, he'd just tap me and he'd carry on <laughs> tapping me until I, until I gave him my attention, which really annoyed me. And whether my dad saw that and adopted it because he, he saw that it annoyed me, which probably was the reason, uh, he started doing that now. And now that he's caught on to it annoying me, he does it even more. So that's probably my biggest pet peeve from you, Rob. <laughs> Lesser than Rob. <laughs> What about you, mate? Where do we start, mate? To be honest, there's so many. Harry, um, he's, he's a nightmare because he's, he's up every morning at six o'clock. Every single morning, he gets everybody up. That's a lie. Uh, Harry cannot get out of bed. <laughs> he sleeps till two, three in the afternoon. Well, there's a, there's a good excuse for that, isn't there? Go on. Well, my girlfriend lives in New York, so I have to stay up and talk to her. I should be on her yes, own. I get that, yeah. Go cool. sleep in. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. I'm 25. I had to think about that then. So how much sleep do you need? How much sleep do I need? Yeah. I, I, usually get, I usually get eight hours. That's usually what I aim for, So because I'm not going to, to sleep until three, four o'clock. So I have enough sleep, we'll put it that way. <laughs> Yeah. Well, when you were 25, did you sleep until like uh, what? No, never, mate. I was up at five o'clock every morning going for a run, then a swim, bike ride, just the normal things that you do, you know. Yeah. Well, I used to get up at five, but it was never to run or swim or bike. It was to get for a wee, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, Rob, here's another question for you. If you were not in the entertainment industry, um, if you weren't uh, such an amazing singer as you are, we're definitely going to get into that in a minute. Um, what other career would you have chosen? Well, I started in sales um, when I was very young, but I always, when I was when I was young, I always wanted to be a professional golfer. Okay. So I probably would have really pushed for that, to be honest. Yeah, that that, that was my, one of my dreams when I was younger was to be a, a pro golfer. Are you good? Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty good, aren't I, Harry? You're a good player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, years ago, when I was playing regular, I was off three, handicap, um, play for the county and stuff. Uh, but now I'm off 
six, I think I'm off six now with the, the society team. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty decent player. That's brilliant. I played golf. I was always terrible. Um, you know, who's a brilliant golfer. Scratch, yeah. about scratch. Julian. Really? Yeah. It's ridiculous. There's, there's a, go on, uh, go on next page and look at her. We went to top golf. And, you know, she quietly goes up and nails this 250 yards with a three water. What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. But um, that's brilliant. Golf, what about you, Harry? Um, I think probably either teaching. I, I always loved uh, working with children. Um, I did a degree separate from, from my music studies in psychology. Um, and that was kind of like a, a plan B if singing ever went down the wayside, I'd, I thought I'd go into teaching or maybe sports journalism. I like, I love sports, love talking about sports. Um, so yeah, probably, probably down that path. The psychology thing's really interesting because it's so completely removed and, and obviously when we'll get into this in a minute, you're, you are a brilliant world-class vocalist in so many ways, but it's interesting that psychology was a, was another possible move for you. Yeah. It kind of came out of nowhere really. Um, if I'm honest, I fell out of love with music at the, at the time that I decided to do my degree and I just kind of thought, if this happens later in life, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, so I had a month to make my decision whether to join up at the university or not. And I decided I'm just going to go for it. It wasn't anything that I'd ever done before psychology. Um, it was just always something that I was interested in. I wanted to challenge. So I decided to do it and I'm thoroughly glad that I did because it's given me, you know, a plan B and I learned a lot of things in those three yeah. years. Me, me and your mum always said that to you, didn't we? We said um, you've got to have a plan B just, be, just in case that music doesn't doesn't pan out for you. Uh, yeah. But you just did it on your own back, though, didn't you? You just went and did it, and I'm doing this degree, and, and you did it, and it was amazing. Brilliant. Good stuff. Um, you both had uh, different, very different careers on stage. Obviously, Rob's yours uh, much longer. Um, much, much, much longer. Much, much. <laughs> <laughs> if there was one moment, and I don't mean like a gig or a tour or a ship, but there's one moment on the stage, um, what would be your most memorable, just single moment? Go to you, Rob. It's, it's, it's got to be being on stage with um, with Harry, you know, with, with, with your son. Uh, it is just an amazing experience. It really is. It's just, um, it, it, it cannot be beaten for me. It's just, it's just up there. Yeah. Tempo. It's amazing. I know what you mean. That's for sure. What about you, Harry? Um, well, I mean, I'm obliged to say being on stage with my dad, but that wasn't my first thought. <laughs> um, I probably, I think I've got two, one positive and one negative. My first, my positive one would be performing at the roundhouse in London. Um, which for those who don't know is quite a prestigious venue in the UK. That was that was a, a big, big thing in my life at the time. The negative one was when I actually had to run off stage to throw up because I wasn't very well. Yeah. I ran off during the <laughs> introduction to Treasure by Bruno Mars and made it back on before the first lyric. So that was quite a, an achievement also. <laughs> by the way, my brother-in-law, Steve Riley, just came on. And uh, said we're gonna win the league, but <laughs> you forgot can we just delete him? Or can we just get rid of him? I think it's a good idea, actually. He didn't put the asterisk at the end of that. That what they will always have on this year, you know. But we'll get into football later. <laughs> I don't know about football, who's the greatest footballer in history? The great Eric Cantona. Eric. It's got to be for me. He's the king, legend. Wasn't it amazing that period of time? Ah, oh, he just owned it. Incredible. Just and owned everything. That's that Crystal Palace. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Harry? I'm going to say Cristiano Ronaldo because growing up as as a Man United fan, he he came when I was come on, uh, yeah. probably about ten. Um, he signed for Man United, so it was like kind of the age where I was really getting into football. Um, and then what he's done since then is just unmatched other than through Lionel Messi. But 
I'm a Man yeah. United fan, so I'm always going to say Ronaldo. <laughs> I love them both, but I'm a little bit older than both of you, so mine's got to be Georgie. Yeah, it, mine would be between them two. George best than Eric can, but Eric just gets it for me because obviously I didn't see as much as uh, as I did George. Yeah. Oh, all good stuff. Um, brilliant. Well, we've got Rob and Harry Lineker on here, and um, I want to find out more about their careers. Rob, I know a lot about. We're going to start with Rob. Um, Rob was, um, I don't know if child prodigy is the best way to describe it, but you certainly, I think you came into the industry with, um, uh, with, uh, the Linekers and your dad and so on. But tell us a little bit about that, Rob. What was that like, uh, being so young and in the middle of that? Um, and, and sorry, did it start before that? Was there anything before that? No, uh, well, I was, I was, I was 10, 10 years old when I first went on stage. Um, I used to come on when my dad was working with his brothers. Um, I, I went on when I was 10 years old uh, and then just sort of got more and more into the act, um, did one song first and then did two or three songs and then ended up doing, you know, a lot more and missed a lot of school, to be honest, um, which looking back, I do regret, if I'm honest. But at the time, I was having a, a whale of a time being 12, 13 years old and earning you know, decent money working five, six nights a week sometimes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it, it was, it was great. Uh, and as I say, it was like from 10 years old. So a long time. Hey, what's this hair you got on here? What's all this? I'm thinking the same. <laughs> That's cool, man. Wow. Right, I'll try and do that again. What do you think? That? <laughs> the quaffle. Those wings. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, Lennox has had an amazing uh, reputation in uh, what we call Clubland, but the higher level of Clubland. And yeah. uh, brilliant. I actually went to try to find some uh, some old footage. Couldn't find anything. Couldn't find anything online. Is there any footage of the Lineker's? But he was no, it was 1942, that's why. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I'm sure there is somewhere, but back in those days it just wasn't with the phones was it or anything it just didn't have it's so easy now to do it yeah. uh, to video things but it, it just wasn't in those days um i'm sure there is somewhere yeah i remember um this was post linicas and it was pre-life um i think um i remember seeing you sing um i think was she's out of my life and because oh, yeah. there was this uh, little white kid singing like michael jackson so much it's brilliant mate yeah thanks mate it was i still sing that one now <laughs> so do i um, <laughs> do, yeah yeah he was um he, he was one of my uh, the one of my mentors from 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 when i first started singing with michael jackson he was just amazing yeah everything he did everything he did probably i i did from ben Albert there, all the, the old songs. Yeah. And te technically speaking, because your voice is right up in that higher falsetto range, and uh, I know when you were younger, it was, is it, how's it, now you've got a bit older, is it, um, is, is it still there holding up for you? It's gone, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've still, I've still got the falsetto, um, but it's not as, it's not as strong as it used to be, and I've come down probably a little, it's probably a semitone, yeah. I would think, sometimes a tone. But Harry, um, Harry, um, he's obviously with being in, in the D63 with a falsetto. I remember Harry, though, when he was, um, before he went to the Brit School, which I'm sure he's going to talk about in a bit, he, um, he was struggling with his falsetto. Can you remember, Harry? You were mm -hmm. like, you didn't really have a strong falsetto. And then all of a sudden, bang, he had this really strong falsetto. Yeah, but do you know why? Go on. Because you told me to listen to Frankie Valley. Correct. There you go. That's what happened. Is that right? So it's down to you, Rob. Have <laughs> <laughs> you noticed he keeps calling me Rob? I do know. I've been doing it to annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. If you haven't, if you haven't uh, heard Rob Lineker sing, just check out this video. You're going to love this.
is there any fan said at the end of the show? Uh, possibly when you've sung a song that means so much to them, uh, whether it be a loved one that has passed away or a parent or whatever, uh, somebody very close to them, and that is, it has touched them and um, you've gave them the joy and the happiness that that song has given them. Just a phenomenal voice, brilliant. Yeah, what about that, mate? Yeah, superb. Um, <clears throat> there's a place in Blackpool called Leighton Institute, and uh, there was in the days. Uh, boy, you know, I was. I, we, we just went down the the wormhole on YouTube of going through things like Wheel Tappers and Shunters Club, and and some of those old working men. Some of those clubs were brilliant. Oh yeah, the day just so good and. Really, kind of working, working men stuff, but so good. And um, Anne and I did a season at Leighton in uh, Night to Remember with Nick, Nick Page, and Darren Colton. And did, did you do it the year before that or the year after that? Was it both? Can you remember? We did it before the two years previous to you, right? Um, with Darren again, with Darren Colton. Um, yeah, there were amazing times. I, I loved it at the Leighton. It was. Fantastic times where, you know, six nights a week for 12, 15 weeks, was it? Something like that. Yeah. Packed every night. Um, just brilliant. Fantastic atmospheres. Times that you'll never forget. No, absolutely. In fact, it's funny. We did talk about Steam and brother-in-law, Steve and Mel. When we did it, they lived in Liverpool. We're in Blackpool. And I don't know how many nights we did. We maybe did, I don't know, 70, 80 nights. They probably saw 60 of them. Oh, really? <laughs> I thought really. Yeah. I like to see the shows. Are you not- still going? No, I think they have the odd, the odd night there, but not like no, that. Well. are not doing it anymore. Just the odd, the odd rock night and th- things like that, but it's gone. Yeah, very yeah. But um, it's a shame. Yeah, it's good. But Rob, brilliant having you on the show, mate. Um, let's talk football. Great to be here. How do you um, how do you feel about Liverpool winning the league? So, in all seriousness, I think Liverpool I hate saying this, but I think Liverpool are going to win the league, and I think they deserve to win the league. I they think definitely Klopp, Jurgen Klopp, I think he's brilliant. Can't stand Liverpool, but I love Jurgen Klopp. I think he's great. But how do you feel about the league? You know, because they're going to win it um, sooner or later. And uh, what about what's happening? The decisions that the Premier League are making on how this is going to come to an end. I don't know. It's um, it's such a shame, isn't it? It's uh, that it's happened like this, and, and and with the games going to be played behind closed doors as well, with no fans or anything like that, it's just going to be weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've got to do it either way. If they, if they you know if they didn't play anymore, uh, they've got to hand it to Liverpool because that the, the, that would be the right thing to do. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, they've been the best best team uh, this season, so um, you know. You, you, I hate to say it, but you've got to give it to him. To be honest, best team last season too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was on the cards, wasn't it? We, we all said it last season. They're going to do it. And if, if I did, would have had a bet, they would have been them this season. But I, I can't have brought myself to put any money on Liverpool to win the league. Know, me neither. <laughs> well, anyway, brilliant having you on the show, Harry. Hello. How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. Twenty five years of age. I first met you. I didn't. Did I meet you? With, was Starbucks the first place I met you? Other than when you were a kid going to the football game. Yes, my first memory of, of meeting you was in Liverpool at the Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know there's a there's a, a street a road in Liverpool called Lineker Road? Did you know? Really? That? Yeah. Did you not know that? Did you know that? that, that yeah. I felt the same. I think it's called. You spelled the same. I think it's called Lineker Road or Lineker Street. Um, um, we were everywhere. There's a lot of us, isn't there, Dad? <laughs> we're everywhere, yeah. <laughs> Steve Riley just said, who would you rather win the league, Liverpool or City? So we're going to ignore that question. 
But um, but yeah, uh, I'd love to find out, uh, Harry, when you were young, because obviously you're watching your dad perform, um, and I, I can relate to it because of Nick, and he's been watching us perform, and I. But um, is there a moment when you uh, can, that you can remember when you looked at your dad doing what you're going to do and thinking, "I want to do that," or did it just kind of happen organically? Um, I think kind of organically. I've always said to people when when they've said, "Oh, so your dad forced you into doing this," he's never once um, forced me to to sing. Never once. He's always said, "If you if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do." Um, so I think it was kind of a thing that came organically. Obviously, I, I always went and, and watched him sing as a as a young kid, and he always got me on stage. So. I, I grew up in that world and, you know, I love the attention. So what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, it was, it was an organic thing, which I'm, I'm glad about because I think the way kids work, if you push them to do something, they're going to push back. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that it, it was like that. I said it was the same with us. There's someone on here called Daniel Meltino Lineker. Uh -huh. Yes, a cousin <laughs> everywhere. Lots <laughs> of Linekers, he said. Linekers <laughs> uh, spelled the same way in Liverpool. But uh, obviously, you, you you grow up. You're watching your dad and do, then you get into singing and stuff. And then tell us about uh, tell us about that those those teen years and getting into uh, the stuff that you you, you did. And, so, and um, I when I was nine years old, um, my mum took me along to a, an audition in um, in Manchester for a BBC opera called The Little Prince, um, which was something that I wasn't really interested in, um, but I was happy to, you know, go... I've just said that they didn't force me to do anything, but they did force <laughs> me to do that audition. Um, yeah, so I went and auditioned. There was 250,000 kids that auditioned for a part, and I, I managed to get one of the parts. So that was kind of the first professional thing that I did um, musically and that kind of opened up a, a world for me at a young age which was which was great um, so after that um, I went it was through BBC talent um, that was that was working with the, the children on that so from then I got a lot of auditions for West End stuff that I wasn't successful with but I kept kept going and then when I was 15 I read about a school in London called the Brit School um, which is a performing arts college it's the only free one in the country and um, so that was that was what why my mum and dad wanted me to go there um, so I uh, I kind of set my sights on that I wanted to go I wanted to move to London when I was 16 study music be amongst like-minded people um, so yeah that was that was what I did when I was 16 and then finished when I was 18 and then I did my psychology degree when I was 21. So it was kind of just a bit of a, right. a halfway pass for that. So we met in Starbucks, what, about four years ago, was it? Um, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Three, four years ago, yeah. I think I remember your dad telling me you fell out of love with music and mm -hmm. have a little chat and see what we can do and we're doing what we're doing. And uh, so I been involved since that time and i've seen i've seen growth in you but i've also seen i think you find in the love again oh definitely definitely meeting people um in december 63 and you definitely uh, you added a lot to that group and it's it's wonderful that show you see it on the ships no matter what lineup no matter what goes on the show just kills it everywhere always every time every show Great, so so good, and you fit fit right in with that. Um, and then I remember, uh, and we talk about this a lot. Obviously, I'm very much a family man. I mean, I've been very very blessed with both Anne and Nick. Um, and any of the father son things, um, it's, it's so easy for me to relate to it. When you came to the expo and came, uh, I remember, I can't remember what it was. Right halfway down, FaceTiming Rob and saying, "Watch this." And as a dad, and you won't get this, I don't think sons do get it really, as a dad, you, when you see the look on the dad's eyes when they're watching that, nothing to touch it. <laughs> nothing to touch it. You see it, and it's it's pride like, um, there's pride you can't buy. It's brilliant. It means everything in the world to you, know. But uh, if you haven't seen uh, Harry perform or listened to his voice, check this out.
sad, so sad. It's a sad, sad situation, and it's getting more and more absurd. It's sad, so sad. Why can't we talk it over? Always seems to be the sorry seems to be the hardest word. Too sexy, beautiful. Everybody wants to taste. That's why and I still get jealous. You're too sexy, beautiful. Everybody wants to taste. That's why this is my quest to follow that star. No matter. Superb, Barry. Brilliant. Thank Brilliant. you. How long ago was that? Uh, about two years ago. That's two or three years ago, yeah. Two three years yeah. ago, yeah. So good. It is, it is funny, you know, you talk about DNA, in, especially in our industry, and I guess it's kind of the same in, in, in football, or I guess in any industry, when you see the sons following in the father's footsteps, they've got their own thing, but you can see so many traits. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear it, you know, and it's... Uh, I just think it's a wonderful thing. I, I really do think it's a it's a tremendous thing. So you've been um, working uh, on stage with that about six six seven years was about yeah. the first. Uh, yeah, about the same as Nick and I, and um, <clears throat> uh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Well, actually, I'm just watching all the uh, all the love emoticons go up as you're singing. <laughs> Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Um, I know you've got a new single um, that you're, you're writing your own stuff and so on, and the new one we saw, um, it's called Hypnotized. What's it about? What have you written it about? Uh, it's about my girlfriend who's watching, I think, or she shouldn't be because I told her to. So. <laughs> um, you better be. <laughs> it's about her. Um, I've, I, I've been writing music for a long time, but I can't, like I said, I kind of fell out of love with it and then I took it back up a couple of years ago. And it was when I met Michael Williams, who's one of the best people at TAD. Um, we started working together. He, pro he produced a lot of my stuff. Um, so, yeah, this this one's about her. Brilliant. Check this out. There's a little snippet of uh, Hypnotized from Harry Lineker. Check it out. So come on, girl. I'll show you what I've got. You make me weak. All right, so Emma just came on and said, I can't stand that song. <laughs> 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 you're fine here, and, uh, and your mum did. Your mum's watching too, and she wrote it. So it's, it's yeah, that, That's her favourite song that I've written. Is it? Oh. It's great. It's excellent. It's out on Spotify today, is that right? It's Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be out everywhere this week. It just needs to get approved. Um, but, yeah, I think it's actually out on Spotify now, so... Brilliant. Uh, jump on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your uh, streaming music and uh, type in there, Harry Lineker Hypnotize. It's going to be great. Great, we could spend all day on the show. We, we've still got an hour to spend about football, let alone the music. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, we'll, jump to the, uh, we'll jump to the part of the show called Where in the World is Terry? Where in the world is Terry? Where in the world is Terry?
Well, Rob, in true Rob form, is uh, asking how much we've got on this. So yeah, <laughs> we'll have two quid on it, and we'll uh, we'll do it. So uh, what in the world is Terry works like this? I change my background, and I'll put you in a city like that. Where am I, Harry? Liverpool. He nailed it. Where am I, Rob? Ah, oh, theatre of dreams. <laughs> But it's not going to be about football today. It's going to be putting you in places like this. That's, you know what that is? That's where I want to be. It's Cabo San Lucas. But we're not going to do that today. We're going to do a little drone footage and put you in, uh, in another city and tell us where I am. I think, who should we start with? I think we'll start with, uh, with Rob. Okay. Rob, I'm going to change my footage. Tell me where I am. Amsterdam. Nailed it. Look at that. Mad. That's two quid, Rob. What gave, what gave it away? Was it? I saw Amsterdam written on the thing. Was it, was it written on there? Oh, <laughs> I'm not having, I didn't see that. No, you're not having that. <laughs> this one doesn't have Amsterdam on it. This is for two quid. Oh, God. Is it Venice? It is. Nailed it. I was going to say you've been there. All right, Harry, this pressure, you got two of them. Even one of them was a giveaway. <laughs> um, this, might be, this might be easy for you, but then again, it might not. Where am I, Harry? See, there's some text in there that might give it away. It's got to be London. No. Come on, H. No idea. The belter, though. Look at that. Look at that uh, scenery. Oh, uh, Dublin. No, no. It is a bit hard, I must admit. But um, you're your dad. I said Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Look at that Castle Hill, Edinburgh. You got it, Rob. Oh, you oh. see. Hey, Harry, you owe your dad four quid. It's not going to I never get it. <laughs> four quid for Rob. All right, no way to get that back. Um, brilliant. Let me see. Um, <laughs> someone says Amsterdam was written on the roof. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to not have that. Um, in every show, we ask a question to every guest. I love this question. I'm going to ask it at least two. And it is this. If you could spend the next 60 minutes with any two people dead or alive, um, in any one place on earth, who would you like to spend the next hour with? Uh, where would you go and what would you say to them? What would you talk about? I'm going to start with you, Harry. Two people, one place, anywhere in the world, who would it be? I'm going to go, we're going to go to the pub. Okay. And it's got to be Quincy Jones and uh, Ricky Gervais. Oh, Quincy Jones because uh, he's he's produced some of my favourite music and albums of the past sixty years. Um, so I'd love to sit down and pick his brain about that. And Ricky Gervais just because he's written some of the best sitcoms, my favourite of all time, The Office, Extras. Um, so I'd love to just sit and laugh my head off at him, and we'd get very drunk. That's what I'd do. <laughs> He's brilliant, mate. Afterlife, Derek, everything. Yeah, everything he's done just turns to gold. It's brilliant. We've got uh, we've got front row tickets to see Gervais in June. Is it June? June or July twenty fifth in LA, and I hope he doesn't get cancelled yet. So, <laughs> well, he's going to be close. God, he's, yeah, he's brilliant. What about you, Rob? Two people, one place. Um, is my wife watching? Uh, let me see. Uh, just says, no, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Yeah, <laughs> now, I would... I'm going down the football side again because I just love football. So it would be Eric, of course, Eric Cantona, and George Best. Bestie. Sat on a beach in Barbados drinking rum punch and just talking football. And I'd just love to see George have his philosophy on football and listen to Eric and all oh, that used to be amazing. I'd just let him 
Let them go for it. Best likes a drink, if I'm honest, Dad. Well, true. Yeah, I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, there's so many you could choose from. I'd love to see oh, God, yeah. Alex Ferguson and Matt Busby and talk about football. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, this has been a great show. It's been a fun, uh, a fun show. <laughs> we could spend forever. Um, uh, seriously, <laughs> your wife, Rob, um, just said snore in big. <laughs> <laughs> she knows I'm really missing my football. Yeah. Really missing it. So, well, um, yeah. I believe, uh, Ari, you watched the Bundesliga at the weekend, right? I did, yes. It was nice to have a bit of normality. In fact, there's a game on tonight. Bayern Leverkusen are playing tonight, so I'm going to watch that. Me too. When's it on? In about 20 minutes? In fact, it might have already been on. All right. Well, we might watch it. I've missed it for this. Can you believe it? (laughs) (laughs) Rob and Harry, having you on the show, this has been great. Loads of people uh, will go back on here and answer some of these comments, but thanks for joining us. It's been great having you on the show. This week we've got some... Yes, tomorrow we've got Bucky Hood from the Righteous Brothers. Roy Walker's here on Wednesday, a bunch of other people. Um, stay safe out there. I know we're here in Arizona. Um, they started, uh, we no longer have a stay-at-home order. They're relaxing some of the social distancing. But if you're going out there, please still wear a mask, wash your hands, stay safe. Let's get rid of this, get, let's get rid of this thing and let's get back to normal as soon as we can. Thanks for joining us, joining us on TED Talk. I can't speak today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.